So today we're going to look at section 1F, the coefficient of determination. The coefficient of determination allows you to see what percentage of effect that you can measure based on the coefficient r, right? When we defined our r. So what we're looking at is, for example, temperatures go up. What do you think happens to ice cream sales? Go up. Go up. Do you think those two things are related or associated? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Well, what the correlation of co uh, the coefficient of determination, not the correlation coefficient, that's different. The co coefficient of determination determines how, to what percentage you can define that effect. <coughs> For example, temperature goes up, ice cream sales go up, probably a pretty strong correlation there, or association there, not correlation, but association. And so if that's the case, we want to know how much the heat is explaining what's happening. So the mathematics is extremely easy. Remember that we talked last time about the correlation coefficient, just R, right? So the correlation coefficient is your R value. And we've talked about three different ways to find it, using your calculator, doing it by hand using the formula, or using a, the Excel formula. Well, the coefficient of determination <clears throat> is simply R <clears throat> squared. So once you've found one, it's easy to find the other by simply squaring it. Which also means that I'm able to go the other way. If, it, if I have the, co the coefficient of determination, r squared, how would I then find the correlation coefficient? Taking the square root, exactly. But what you have to be careful with here, make sure that you watch the sign. Because remember that these things are always, so the, the coefficient of determination is always positive. Because if you square something, it always turns it into a positive, right? <coughs> But if you take the square root of something, you can have a positive or negative. So all you need to do is take plus or minus the square root, and then you need to choose by looking at the scatter plot or the language of the question. For example, they may say that there is a negative association, so you know your R is going to be negative. There is a positive association, means your R is going to be positive. Right? So you have to, you'll just take the square root, but then you're also going to have to determine which sign. If you have a scatter plot and all the points look like they're going down, then you're going to use what sign? Neg negative if they look like they're going down, positive if it looks like it's going up. Right? So. Make sure you're careful when you do take the square root of that. That's the easy part, but then make sure you also assign the appropriate sign. If you call it something positive and it's really negative, then you're going to get the answer wrong. Now, the correlation, I'm sorry, the coefficient of determination literally tells us what percent, what the thing we're measuring is affecting our other piece of data, okay? Okay, so let's look at an example. Let's say that as temperatures rise, ice cream sales rise, right? So something fairly simple. And let's say we did the calculations 
and we ended up with an R value of, it's going to be positive, so let's say an R value of 0.8, okay, or 0 0.8. So an R value of 0 0.8 shows an association, and since it's above 0 0.75, we could say that there's a very strong association, yes? Strong positive association. Well, what we, what we can then go further and talk about the relationship between these two. So if we take R squared, right? So R is that. We're just going to square both sides to get our coefficient of determination. That tells us that R squared is 0 0.64. If you square that. then it really doesn't make much sense unless we change it to a percent. We can change 0 0.64 to a percent by simply moving the decimal two places over or multiplying by 100, whatever you want, however you usually do that. So that tells us that our R squared, the coefficient of determination, is 64%. So you'll square it, then turn it into a percentage because a percent tell is a is a more usable form. Okay? Once you have it as a percent, then we can write a sentence or two to describe what's happening. Now, when you're doing making these descriptions, make sure that you use language that reflects the thing that you're measuring. Okay? So, for example, in this example, 64% of the rise in ice cream sales can be attributed to a rise in temperature. because these things are definitely related, right? We've said there's an association, right? Now, but that only it defines what 65% is, or 64% in this case. You also must include one more sentence. The other 36% is decided by other <coughs> factors. We don't know what factors, so don't start making up stuff. But some other thing is driving the other 35, 36%. <coughs> okay? But we can definitely attribute this amount to the rise in temperature. And that's all there is to it. So you'll either be given R, which will then square, turn into a percent, and write the sentences to describe it, or you might be given some sentences. 75% of the whatever can be attributed to that. You would take 75% and change it into a decimal, and then take the square root of it to find your R. So working forwards or backwards. All right. <clears throat>